Fire is not new to the, the community of Lytton. In the type of climate that we're in, we've had families that have been up against evacuation orders three, four times in their lifetime. This is typically known as Lot 47 in the Batani Valley, so we're just a little bit higher than the meeting of the Thompson and Fraser River. The Batani Valley is basically our bread basket. We harvest so much traditional foods up there. There's always wind here. It's one of the things that is remarkable about Lytton. So with the wind, we know that fire travels incredibly quickly and can be quite devastating. Our community was annihilated by a fire in 21, under conditions that would have been almost impossible to have witnessed, unless you were there. The communities themselves are dealing with the trauma that comes with that. I have nieces and nephews who are five and six now. When they see a cloud in the sky, they'll stop and they'll ask, is that a cloud or is it smoke? You can't close your eyes to it here, so everyone's very well aware of it. The only thing that's changed in the last two years is how we respond to it. We have so much history fighting fires, and you know, the prescribed burns, they're a tool that works, it's effective, it's timely, it's on the shoulder season of fire season. So that's the time when you want to focus your team's energy and gain experience together. We got to mitigate, we got to be prepared, and we got to respond, and we got to recover. One of the reasons we're doing that treatment here is we feel that the fire's the biggest risk is advancing in this direction. So if we treat this large area here, it will help mitigate the fire effects on homes further up the valley. We're living in one of the highest risks area of the province, as we know. So what we're hoping to do is manage that risk through manual and mechanical fuel treatments, but also prescribed burn. So just following, a, we have a number of different regimes that we can use. And this is one of the regimes is working out burning a, a, a grassland type ecosystem without doing treatment ahead of time. So it's one of the ways that we can manage it. This is a fire dependent ecosystem. Applied fire has been used here for 10,000 years to shape the ecosystem. What we're seeing with the change in the ecosystem that has been brought by decades of suppression, it's now brought in invasives and species that are not native to the area that are beginning to compete quite strongly with the actual native species. Putting more fire into the landscape on our terms, which is in the fall and the spring, as it was done in the ancient times, is the only way forward really to shaping the ecosystem back to what it needs to be to be a safer, effective, and much healthier stand. When we do the fuel management burns, because of the timing that we do it, when you do come back after the treatment, because there's no brush and land covering now, you'll see our spring, everything start to pop up. It helps bring out the land and refresh it and give it back to green where it's supposed to be, right? This grows during the springtime. It is called Tsawada. We gather this all through the spring to eat it. You freeze it, dry it, can it, and then when it gets to this point and there's seeds actually on here, we use that for flavoring stews and with food, and it's also used to make a tea. It has a pretty nice concentration of vitamin C, so it helps during the winter. So it's something that we would drink to stave off colds and flus and such. The color palette of Lytton has changed, and even the light, because the light is reflected off of the color palette. And it's changed the quality of light over the last two years. So you see the color palette of the town change and then you can kind of match it to how our people are doing and how they are because they're so connected to the land. That's why a lot of people don't leave their homes when they're evacuated. The benefits of the fuel management are that it leaves a protected area around your residential areas. This kind of controlled burning where we're taking care of the fuel loading and we're achieving traditional objectives at the same time is key and crucial to us moving forward, at least in this area. And I think the more work we can get done like this, the more we'll be able to mitigate those impacts of those kind of fires, right? I think it's the only way forward. I spend four to five months of the year on the road fighting fires like that with an incident management team, and we try to manage them as best we can, right? But the more front end work we do, hopefully it'll help lessen the impacts to communities like ours. Any community that sees this work as overwhelming, there's no step too small or too big. You have to get on it and uh, manage your land, embrace it and learn from you know, your teachings. The forest fires, they come in and they change everything because everything's so interconnected. From the movement of our game to the movement of the predators, right? The different birds that come in, everything's impacted. So. I would rather see fire used in a good way to be able to protect the homes and the infrastructure and the culturally important places than to not use fire and just be left with what it does when it's being used destructively.